Now tied for the final play-in spot and just four games back of home court, OKC has a bone to pick in terms of reversing their reputation as bottom feeders. SGA's superstar development has seen him morph into a 31 point per game score, cementing the end of OKC's rebuild. Also making OKC up now in the West is the sophomore progression from Josh Giddy, who's adjusted to the speed of the game. The Thunder's two top creators in SGA and Giddy are also both top 15 among all backcourt players in defensive rating. However, it's far from simply this team's two top guys, which has reversed OKC sees fortunes. While the leadership of SGA and Giddy, in addition to those stats I just mentioned is the driving factor, the culture shift can also be attributed to the better shot selection of fourth year pro Lou Dort and the 15 man unit as a whole buying into Mark Dagno's grinded out defensive minded system. J-Dub Jalen Williams, who was 2022's 12th overall pick, has looked shockingly NBA ready. Stay tuned for an in-depth breakdown of those factors and more. Just 10.8% of you watching are subscribed though, so please subscribe if you haven't already. Leave a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and follow at Hoops on Instagram and Twitter. Thanks so much for supporting this platform. Toronto-born SGA is tied with MVP candidate Jason Tatum for the NBA's fourth highest scoring average, as you probably know by now. Obviously, hindsight is 2020, but looking back on it, and Shea's been a pretty damn big steal for Sam Presti in that OKC LA trade back in 2019. In that deal, the Clippers forfeited five future first round picks. Little did either the Clipper or Thunder front office know at the time, was that Shea was about to steadily progress into one of the savviest bucket getters on the planet. The picture-perfect annual progression from Oklahoma's face of the franchise has seen him more from a 10.8 point scorer as a rookie into a hefty 19 per night guy in year two, to a 23.7 score in year three, to a 24.5 per night guy in year four. Before this one, after two years of being at an all-star caliber level, you can now safely say this man's taken the jump from your typical all-star into a bonus superstar only behind Doncic, DeRozan, Mitchell, Trey, Morant, Halliburton, and Jalen Green. As the pick and roll ball handler, Gilgis Alexander has scored the ninth most amount of points. But the reason that's insane is because he's number two in total points scored in isolations as well. And other than Shea, only Luka, DeRozan, and Dame are top 10 among all players in both one on one scoring and pick and roll scoring. In other words, Shea's a top three versatile scorer in basketball, whether it's his shooting balance, his better understanding of angles, his more fluid ability to take what the defense gives him, his improved handle, or the fact that after taking three to six dribbles, he's knocking down a career best 41.7% of his threes, Shea's improvement is evident in a variety of areas. OKC's won six of their last seven, much to do with SGA's niftily consistent shot creating bag, consisting of a lethal mix of tough to gauge in and out moves, moving behind the backs, space creating step backs featuring league best caliber moving jabs, or just typical soundly effective hezies. It's an array of weapons that ends up being astoundingly unpredictable. Point of making this video about OKC as a whole, however, is the development of Josh Giddy, who's averaging career highs in points and rebounds per game, plus field goal, three-point, and free throw percentage. Unreal year for the kid from Melbourne, Australia, who's lived up to expectations since being 2021's number six overall pick, as the playmaking chops of Giddy can be overwhelming given he's six foot eight, 210, can see over the top of the defense and back you down, grab rebounds with that strength as well. He's still turning it over a tad bit, his assist to turnover ratio leaves a lot to be desired, and he needs to work on the consistency in his shooting release, as well as his killer mentality in terms of punishing late rotations, but overall, it seems Josh evidently has a mindset that's built for this game, so I'm not too too worried about that. Example of that is him holding his own in this back and forth with the much bigger Nick Claxton right here, but it's kind of scary that barring the improvements he can make that I mentioned a second ago, he's still giving you 16, 8, and 6, not to mention half a block and a steal, but this somewhat decent. 53.8% true shooting clip. I'm looking forward to going in depth on Giddy's bag in future uploads throughout this entire decade because he's a special player in terms of his IQ. However, I want to save time to talk about the best player to come out of Santa Clara University since two-time MVP Steve Nash, J-Dub. If you aren't familiar with his game, meet the most underrated rookie in the NBA right now, Jalen Williams, a combo forward with every skill set ideally suited for the space and pace three-point friendly ways of the modern NBA. He won Western 
Conference Rookie of the Month in November following in Giddy's footsteps, who won four of those last year. Sam Presti's pulled off a number of draft steals throughout his long tenure in OKC, but this 20-year-old rookie phenom has a chance to be the very best of them all. I'm sold on J-Dub's potential, considering the handle he's got for his 6'9", 240-pound frame, and how he can ruthlessly translate his blend of downhill force and quick twitch dribbling ability into monster finishes at the cup. But I'm curious, in your opinion, what's your player comparison for J-Dub? I'll keep what you say in mind for a Thunder video down the line. Of course, the best answer to that question down below gets next video shout out. Today's commenter shout out goes to Caleb, who says Jaw's best play ever has to be the 0.4 second buzzer beater from the full court pass from Adams. That was insane, never before seen. Great take. 